If you want to know how I turned this into this, then keep watching. What's up? Welcome back. My name is Kelsey. If you're new to my channel, nice to meet you. I'm an interior designer, vegan, and person who laughs way too much at their own jokes. I make videos every Monday about all or none of those very vague subjects. If you haven't already seen my last video, I will preface with, no, I don't normally sound like this. Yes, I have COVID. Yes, I'm okay. And yes, I am on week two of quarantine. And I'm going absolutely out of my damn mind. So in honor of that, today I'll be blessing you with some actual interior design content. I know, it's weird. An interior designer who literally has not made an interior design video in four months. You're welcome. Today, I am going to be theoretically turning my quarantine crib into a cozy cottage beach house. I say theoretically because this room is actually very recently renovated and I have no interest in doing any changes to it or re-renovating it at all. Um, this is strictly for fun because I am bored. All simply because I have nothing better to do with my time these days, apparently. Although this project will not actually be getting built, I hope that it's fun and entertaining for you to watch my entire design process from conception and give you a little glimpse into how those damn people on HGTV make those really cool renderings. I promised you all months ago that I was going to start making this interior design series where I would show you the in-depth process of an interior design project and I literally quit after making two of those videos so this is what you're going to get. <laughs> If you do like this video, please do me a huge favor and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let me know in the comments so I know that I should start making more content like this. If you did watch my two previous interior design videos, which if you haven't seen them, I'm gonna link them up. No. Here. I'm gonna link it up here. Then you already know that the first step to an interior design project is your inspiration. Since I'm envisioning the space to be serving beach cottage lurks, I'm going to be creating a mood board based on those kinds of images. Being born and raised on Long Island, I'm kind of all over the nautical themed beach home look. It's very overdone. How dare people live on an island in the middle of the ocean next to a beach and decorate their homes nautical themed. So for this project, I'm gonna be putting a slight boho twist on it. I'm gonna do this with color, with textiles, maybe some artwork. To start creating my inspiration board, I'm basically just gonna scroll on Pinterest and Google and sometimes even Instagram to gather whatever inspiration images draw my eye. My style over the years has evolved from a more traditional look to a more contemporary look. So everything that I do design usually is more towards the modern look than traditional. So there's also gonna be a slight contemporary flair to it. And here's the finished inspiration board. As you can see, I didn't just select photos of other rooms. I kind of selected a variety of different photos, including textures, fabrics, and some colors that I might be interested in using. After your inspiration board is done, it's time to survey. Surveying is when you accurately measure the space to be designed or renovated so as to accurately take in its structural and aesthetic features. To do this, I'm gonna be using two different tools. I'm gonna to be using a standard measuring, oops, <laughs> I'm going to be using a standard measuring tape and a laser distance measurer, measurer, measurer. Yeah, yeah, measurer. This is used to measure the like length and width of a room as well as the ceiling height. Um, it's good for measuring anything that is too long of a distance to measure with a standard measuring tape. Now I'm literally just going to measure the entire room and record my measurements. Heights of windows, doors, rail, Moldings, moldings, literally everything. Get as much information about the room as you can. Now there's a couple way that you could record your measurements. Some people like to print out a floor plan if they already have an existing one and they will mark down the measurements as they're measuring. If you don't have a plan, which I do not have an existing plan for this, um, you can sketch a general idea of the shape of the room and then record measurements on top of that. Or you could do what I'm going to do and put it right into my computer in a program called AutoCAD. In my opinion, this is the quickest and easiest thing for me to do. Do I have AutoCAD on my computer? I do have AutoCAD on my computer. Hold on, I gotta open this up one quick second. <laughs> Oh, what's up? All right, now that I'm done surveying the site, I've got all my measurements, I've got my plan into CAD, now it's time to space plan. Space planning is when you assess the use of the room and plan out where the walls and furniture are gonna be. I'm going to act as if I cannot remove any walls, windows, or doors to the space, so I'm really just gonna be planning out the furniture. And like I said, the first step in that is assessing how the space is gonna be used. 
we call this the apartment of the house and it's attached directly off of our normal house. There's just a door entrance. When you walk into our front door, instead of going into the regular house, you can go through a door into this apartment. There's two floors. We use the bottom floor right now for extra food storage, bar storage, mostly, mostly bar storage. <laughs> and on the upstairs, we have a pullout couch, a television and a desk area that we use as both our guest bedroom and our office. For this new space, I'm envisioning that it would work kind of like the same, except it would be more of a fully functioning apartment if we wanted to rent it out as an Airbnb, if we had guests staying long-term and they were going to be living here for more than a week or so, and just a place for me and my friends to hang out, drink and, yeah, that's all we do. We just we just sit around and drink, I guess. <laughs> so with all that in mind, what we're gonna need are the following. An entryway with a cubby to hold jackets, shoes, and other outdoor gear. A formal eating area. A fully functioning kitchen with a refrigerator, a stove, and coffee bar. Potentially some open pantry space. Keeping some of the existing closets for miscellaneous storage. A TV area. A full-size bed. Stairs to access the bed. A desk office area and of course, some lounge seating. Once I know where the basics are gonna go in this floor plan, I can just start playing around with everything and see what flows best. The main thing to keep in mind is how are people going to be flowing through the space? How are people going to be using the space day to day? These are all things that you just wanna keep in the back of your mind as you're space planning. I will usually plan out the entire space, including walls, furniture, etc., in CAD, and then I will use this CAD plan to create the 3D model. For the bed, I'm thinking to save space, we can prop it up on this little awkward platform that's in the corner of the room, and then we can add the stairs to get up to it and create a really cute little cozy sleeping area. Now, let's move this baby into the third dimension, shall we? This is the part that you see on HGTV where it's like, we're gonna bump out this wall, and then we're gonna add this furniture here. Shiplap. 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 Shiplap, 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 shiplap. Say shiplap five times fast, I dare you. This is where the project really comes to life and a tool that we use for a lot of clients so that they can properly envision the space rather than just looking at a floor plan. I'm typically a Revit girl, but today we're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna model the space in SketchUp. Like I mentioned before, I use the CAD plan that I made to import into SketchUp and then I'm able to model right on top of the plan. This way the model is in scale and everything is as accurate as it possibly can be. I'm actually using the free version of SketchUp online because um, <clears throat> I'm really cheap and I don't wanna pay a lot of money to use the actual version. With the paid version, you're able to import a CAD format file directly into SketchUp and use that. But since I was unable to, I just uh, went the route of looking back at my CAD file and measuring the space and just kind of building up from scratch. I also want to preface with saying, I'm sorry if the footage here is a little bit glitchy or shaky. I mean, that's just the nature of these really high graphic programs. Um, sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. But anyways, moving on. The other thing that I love about SketchUp is that they have the 3D warehouse. So instead of physically building all of these components, such as the doors, the windows, the furniture, you could just search in the 3D warehouse and there's a collection of components that people have already created for you that are really easy to use. You can customize everything. It's really such a great tool and it's so easy to make everything just how you want it. Since this is not a SketchUp tutorial, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Um, you guys kind of get the idea that I'm building the base model of the building in SketchUp, and then I'm gonna go ahead and refer to my space plan and start planning out the furniture, dragging in those pre-made components. I'm gonna start downstairs with the kitchen. I'm looking for some countertops, also some appliances. Like I mentioned, I need a fridge, a stove, and I wanna add a little coffee bar. So I'm just dragging those in here. I did say that I wasn't gonna get rid of any doors or walls or windows or anything, but I lied. As it stands, there's three small awkward closets on the lower level, and I really don't think we need all of that storage. Uh, so I took out two of them and I expanded the kitchenette along the wall. I actually lost the footage for this, but next I selected a table and some chairs. I really like the idea of different chairs. I think it makes the space look really cozy and eclectic. And I also built this cubby for hanging coats, shoes, and just whatever extra storage is needed. For the floors downstairs, I'm referring to an inspiration image that I saw that had this really nice herringbone stone. So I'm gonna select a herringbone terracotta as the floor material. I think it's really gonna warm up the space a lot. I'm really unsure about the practicality of having rugs in the kitchen, but I think they're cute. So I'm gonna add this woven rug underneath the eating area just to warm it up a little bit. Remember two and a half minutes ago when I made fun of shiplap? Shiplap, shiplap, shiplap. Well, 
I've decided I'm gonna use shiplap. Whatever. Call me a basic bitch. I think it still looks cute. And I'm not one for putting a lot of color on the walls, so in an effort to keep the walls clean and pristine, we're gonna do some white shiplap. All right, the lower level is looking pretty good. Let's move to the upper level. Before I start adding furniture to this space, I'm just gonna clean up the walls a little bit. The ceilings up here are tall yet vaulted, so it's something I'm gonna have to keep in mind when designing. I'm also gonna continue up that same wall that would be right on top of the lower level, um, that white shiplap. The banisters that we currently have are just plain white wood, but I'm gonna make it a little more earthy, so I'm adding some natural toned wood banisters. Again, just really trying to warm up the space as much as I can with natural materials such as woods, stones, and eventually fabrics. Here I'm gonna start tackling the bed, importing a full-sized bed just to make sure it fits. And then behind it, I wanna add some storage, maybe a little cabinet or some shelving just so people have a place to put a lamp, some books, I don't know, whatever weird stuff you put behind your bed. And I'm gonna make them a darker tone of wood. I am 100% for mixing up the kinds of woods in your space. I really think blending dark woods, medium woods, and light woods is a great way to add depth and not make everything look so uniform. But with that said, I would be careful not to add too many different kinds of woods. I would still make sure they all kind of talk to each other, relate to each other, and that's my two cents. The desk area is simple. I'm just gonna import a plain white writing table and along with that, an actual desk chair, which is something I have yet to purchase even though I've been working from home for a whole year. Rant over. Here's your standard way too oversized flat screen TV that everyone seems to have in their household. Um, but in order to make this accessible from the bedroom area, I'm gonna put it on this little swivel stand and and yeah, we're just gonna pretend like this, this swivels out from the wall. In the real world, there are specific uh, dimensions and requirements that you need to keep in order to build a staircase, but uh, this isn't the real world, so I'm just gonna wing it and build the staircase so it fits in the space I need. When I was younger, I had a bed that was high above the ground and it didn't have a railing on it, and I was always afraid I was gonna fall off, but I never did. But I guess I wasn't hovering over a very deep staircase, so um, deciding to put a railing on this. Next is the fun part of adding more furniture and this really cute credenza for under the TV. Uh, quickly looking up Fran Lebowitz. <laughs> and after that, just looking up some gray fabric that I could use to apply to the sofa. I'm using this cloud-esque like sofa, which I've always wanted one in real life. It just looks so comfy and yeah, it's a sofa, I don't really know what else to say about it. Bringing over the same rug from the kitchen, I'm gonna add that to the living room as well, just to give some cohesion. I really wanted to use some of the colors on my inspiration board to maybe apply to the wall, but after kind of playing around, I, I don't know, a white wall is just so classic and timeless and easy to switch up, so I'd rather just keep white walls and add accessories for color, such as bedding, which I'm doing right now, throw pillows, throw blankets, and of course, artwork on the wall. My number one piece of advice for anyone that's interested in creating realistic space renderings, don't forget to add in these little details. It's these details that can take a sketch rendering and turn it into a living, breathing space. Now, let's see the final product. I'm really excited about how the space turned out. I would say not so bad for about two and a half weeks of design. The kitchen did turn out a little bit more Mediterranean than a cozy cottage, but it's very much my style, a little eclectic yet classic. You could tell this is a theoretical rendering because I would literally never wear Birkenstocks my entire life. Coming up to the second floor, I really feel like I've created a cute, cozy atmosphere to hang out with friends, to have guests over, and maybe even rent out. I mean, I would hang here. <laughs> I was also worried about the logistics of this bed, but being as someone who likes to feel really cozy when they sleep, I feel like this is just such a great place to unwind for the day. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you haven't checked out my previous videos, please go do that. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a solid and like this video. And if you enjoyed this type of video, please let me know down in the comments because it was a lot of fun to make. And if this is something that you're interested in, I would love to make more in the future. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.